Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yes, happy Valentine's Day. Now, why do we celebrate Valentine's Day? Is it a real, like, a real holiday? Is there some weight to it? I guess I could have looked it up. You probably should have done a little research before you. <laughs> I thought it was just, you know, the store's way of <laughs> selling candy and, you know, repackaged candy, chocolates and sweets. Repackaged? <laughs> We've already eaten it. <laughs> I didn't mean repackaged. I meant like, you know, repackaged. the same the same candy. The same candy just in a different package. Uh, it's too early for us to be going here. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. Yes, okay. It's the same. Oh my candy. gosh. Okay. It tastes the same. The chocolates, the the like, tarts. Same. <laughs> just just repackaged, you know, with with uh, some red and pink around it. Yes, yes, yes. We are we are uh, appropriately dressed for our Valentine's Day. Yes, yes. I hung up a little oh. floral um, picture oh my gosh. back back there. Mm. And my Lynn, mm -hmm. I wanted to wear this necklace that you gifted me years ago. Do you? See oh it? my goodness! You gave perfect this to me. little heart necklace. I re I remember that. That Do was you, a long I, time ago. I know ago. that it was from you, but I'm trying yes. to remember what the occasion was. Was it for Valentine's it was Day? Your, no, I think it was your birthday. It was probably, yeah, it's a birthday. Yeah. A birthday yeah. gift. It was but your I, birthday. I love, I love it so much. and I love uh, it too. Yes. So sparkly after all it. these years. After all these years. Perfect. Perfect timing for this Valentine's Day. It's a special show. It it's is a, a very, show. very special show for us today. Yes. And, uh, you know, Mylynn and I talked about um, having uh, an episode dedicated to our dear friend, Tiffany Hale, who uh, recently passed away uh, mm -hmm. this past Christmas. And, uh, and we thought, since it is a day that most people, I guess in America, uh, maybe all over, <laughs> I should have done some more research. <laughs> um, but to, to celebrate her life on a day where a lot of people celebrate love uh, mm. was, was appropriate. So um, we wanted to dedicate uh, this episode to our friend Tiffany Hale. We are excited to be able to share with everybody our memories of her and how amazing she was. You know, her song, I Found Love, is you know, I'm so told, appropriate. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I'm told that it's one of the most streamed songs from the party collection. Um, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, it was um, I remember we worked with Jelly Bean Benitez on that song. I found love. And uh, it's definitely uh, a real special song um, mm -hmm. with a lot of meaning. You know, I, I know it's a, it's a really popular, fun, and you know, dance number. It was always fun to to do that number on stage. I remember, um, you know, just the fans singing along uh, with all the words and even the rap with Tiffany and Damon. Um, it was always one of our uh, more popular numbers when we performed on stage. I love so, that. So, um, yeah, it's a very appropriate song for Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when you guys first met, how did you actually first meet? I know that you both got the show, but did you audition in the open call together? She was at the at my uh, screen test. I remember her doing a dance number and it was... Um, from what's that show uh, uh come on babe why don't we paint the town and all that jazz yes 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 yeah. i can't remember anyway yes yes <laughs> i can't believe i can't remember <laughs> somebody google it um chicago the musical hello hello Duh. Duh. <laughs> 
I remember her doing that number, and then she did this bossy dance to it as well. Wow. Tiffany was always such a light, mm -hmm. you know. She was fun too. Like she knew she she was like one of those people that was beautiful inside and out, yeah. but was super silly too. You know yes, what I mean? yeah. Like she was silly and she wanted to have fun and she didn't care um, what people thought. She was very like, just so composed, but I mean, beyond her years, right? Just poised, even though she was silly and hilarious. And like you said, she didn't, she didn't care. She didn't care if she's being crazy. Like if, you know, like my own insecurity was, I don't want to look stupid. You know, she was like, no, just, just do it. Just be And that's you. why she was such a great actress because she didn't, she wasn't watching herself when she was being silly and crazy. When I first got onto the, the Mickey Mouse Club, one of my first scenes was with Tiffany and I don't remember the name of it, but I can picture it kind of, we were in, we were in a salon where we were getting our hair done or something on the set. And she was the main character. I was nervous. She was just so welcoming, so nice from the get go. And some people might kind of put up like, I've been here for a long time and, you know, don't step on my feet, but there was nothing like that. There was never any place or feel of, of competition with her. You know, she was always just up front, straight and super nice. And she made me feel very comfortable on that day. And, and after that, we became really, really close friends and um, just, you know, got to do the teenage things together, like had sleepovers and went to the dance place to the Videopolis place and just kind of... <laughs> Right. Did all those crazy things and would go with the guys. I just remember her being one of the kindest people on the show. We're all young and she never said one bad thing about anybody ever. We can get chitty chatty and, and gossip. She never spoke one bad word about any person. I always admired her. Um, she was always like well put together you know um before we did photo shoots or interviews she would know how to do her makeup she would mm -hmm. know what clothes looked good together you know like mm -hmm. she she was just really i was all over the place <laughs> but she was really good about you know complimenting me or like telling me what like giving me pointers giving me mm -hmm. tips like fashion mm -hmm. tips and things or you should do this yeah. with your hair or you should maybe not that top but you're also very good with that my Lynn. like i have never i've <laughs> never felt really comfortable with fashion oh. like even before we did this episode my Lynn was helping me with clothes okay i told her more valentine's less christmasy <laughs> yes. i was like Oh, yes. <laughs> Change. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, so, I love you, Dean. <laughs> I, I love you, too. I'm so grateful. But yeah, she was she was a fashion icon, like at she such really a young was. age. She knew what she liked and what looks good. Yes. And, yeah. And that's why people remember her for those, you know, the combat boots. But then after she started wearing combat boots, I started wearing combat boots. I know. I'm. That's what right? I'm saying. She, she sort of set a, a little... Uh, fashion tone um, yeah she made uh the delicacy of a of a floral dress and like the real edgy uh you know feel for you with the combat with the combat boots she was really just very expressive that way she just was being tiffany and, mm -hmm. and it was and it was authentic and it was organic mm -hmm. it was just beautiful because she she probably didn't even know that she was setting some sort of trend you know with her with her hat and her and her combat boots. Even as we got older, we left the show when we moved to Los Angeles. She would show up like in just, I remember just thinking, how can you just show up so casual looking and you look so freaking good, right? Like she, she'd show up in like these tiny little t-shirts, right? The tiny little tee and then just 
some kind of like boyfriend jeans or like kind of baggy, baggy, like she baggy was, jeans. Yeah. So way ahead. So way ahead of her time. She'd show up, she'd have like her little uh, Adidas on and I'd be like, dang girl, you don't even have to try. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? You, you, she didn't have to try. If somebody else came up with that whole combat boot and dress idea, uh -huh. I don't know who it was. It, as right. far as I'm concerned, it was, right, right, right. we did that. You and I moved out to Los Angeles together. She Steve was already there. She, she was, was already, already there. there and mm -hmm. she was, wasn't she by herself? Like she was so brave. I like know. she lived by herself. And I would always think, dang, that is so courageous. She was like, I'm just going to live by myself. I prefer it. You know? And I'm like, I need someone with me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it was so funny. Like we'd go out. I feel like she was the grown up. I know. She was slightly right? younger than us too. I know. Is that funny? Yeah. I was like, Tips the grown up. Like, she's got her own place by herself. She's driving know. her cute little green Mazda Miata. Right. With the top down. Uh huh. That little that little car. Oh uh -huh. my gosh. She would take charge. You were you were Mama Bear. Like you've always been Mama Bear, but she was also Mama Bear. You know, she'd just be like, "Oh, you too." Like, <laughs> let me. <laughs> like we were like the naive, right? It's just like. Let me show you the robes, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. She knew the cool places to go. I remember she introduced us to that that one really sweet um, restaurant, the Ivy, on um, Robertson Street. Oh, the one that, that is, well, now it's always like. It's always it, crowded with celebrities. And it, yeah, if you want to be pictured you know go to the ivy but yeah she just, know. she knew the, the ivy right i didn't know uh, how to get there okay, I, didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know about this place yeah you know but uh i think of our little coffee shop that cafe she mocha cafe mocha cafe mocha i wonder if it still exists on melrose was it, it was on melrose right yeah melrose place and she yeah. she introduced Not us melrose, to melrose. melrose oh <laughs> melrose, melrose avenue <laughs> Is it Avenue or Street <laughs> or Boulevard, Melrose <laughs> Avenue? Do a little bit of shopping at Fred Siegel or mm -hmm. um, or Wasteland or Art Arts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, is it all the, the, the thrift stores? Thrift stores, yeah. And then have some coffee yeah. at like midnight. <laughs> right. And it was so funny. Like it was just us. And sometimes it was a laugh, our yeah. other friend who would come and join us. And we would literally just sit on the couch, drink coffee, drink coffee, and just sit there and talk. And, but I'm like, and then what if we, we got, talk about, who knows, <laughs> you know, life. I remember if we got hungry, cause they had, they had some food there. We would right. eat Lucky Charms cereal. And, and to this day. Lucky Charms <laughs> cereal reminds me of Tiff. Oh, wow. She loved eating that Lucky Charms at Cafe Mocha. <laughs> oh, when she'd always, wouldn't she have like a big, she'd have the big cappuccino. She'd always like be sipping it. She was kind of like this old soul. Like when you were with her, you felt like, you know, we got this. She was very, very adventurous. You would just go for it. If she had a thought in her mind, I have a couple of memories of her where we were on the lot at MGM Studios, what well, was mm -hmm. MGM Studios at the time. And I remember us having, we were wearing roller skates for some reason. And it was, <laughs> the, the park was closed. Why we were there after park hours, I have no idea. Where were our parents? Because you could be. <laughs> what? Right? Because you could be. I guess so. I Somehow. Wonder how it happened. <laughs> but I remember they were hosing down the streets. And uh -huh. then the trams were making their rounds, I guess. They were putting them away or something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I remember Tiff and I had roller skates and we were holding on to the backs of the trams. No way. How dangerous <laughs> was that? But... I was following Tiffany's lead. <laughs> You're like, well, she's doing it, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> they were yeah. not driving very quickly, and they yeah, knew we yeah. were Mouseketeers. There must yeah. have been some late night shooting or something. I have another another memory. I think you were working late. I was on my way home from 
uh, of an event. I went out with a, a friend of ours. I think it was maybe 9, almost 10 o'clock at night. And I drove into uh, the parking garage where we lived. Mm -hmm. And I got mugged. You know, I got oh, mugged yeah. at gunpoint. And I, I don't think I've yeah, ever yeah. publicly talked about this, but you know, it happened and I was terrified mm -hmm. and you weren't home because you were working. I called Tiff. She had a date, mm. you know, with a new beau, I think, that she started dating. Um, and he was like, I remember him being, you know, a musician from Europe, you mm -hmm. know, really cool, sort of like a celebrity. She canceled her plans with him so mm. that she could come and be with me because I was so mm. traumatized about what had happened. She came so quickly. I just will never forget that. She dropped her plans to, to come and, and give mm -hmm. me some, some comfort to help, a, to help a friend out. And that's just the kind of person that she is, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I remember reading just recently that I think it was Tony Luca who posted thoughts about her passing. And, and the one thing that really stood out to me, which is interesting, is he had mentioned that she used to wear the perfume Beautiful. Mm -hmm. When I read that, it just kind of like flooded back, you know, the memories, because I remember distinctly that perfume. And I remember just knowing that is Tiffany. That is her perfume. Nobody buy beautiful. Right. <laughs> and I remember like, I think we all kind of determine like our own perfume smell. I don't know. Like you had, you always loved like peaches and that's right. right? That's right. <laughs> From body you shop. always. Yeah, you always loved that. I think I started getting happy from Clinique. I thought you but... had a musk from... Um... No musks. No? <laughs> no musk. Sorry, Sorry I, I, I misspoke. I like the more fragranty, sweeter, sweeter stuff. Sweeter, yeah, yeah. But so... Tiffany wore beautiful. And that was her fragrance. Anytime she'd come in, I'd be like, yep, there's Tiffany. That was kind of neat that he had remembered that as well about her. I know a lot of people like Tony, Chase, Damon, Albert, mm -hmm. so many others made a, a tribute to Tiff and yeah. posted pictures and memories of her. Yeah. I've also seen so many fan uh, tributes mm -hmm. for her as well mm -hmm. because Nancy, her mom uh, was, was a very private person. Mm -hmm. That I think just just recently she she was able to bring herself to to Google Tiffany's name, oh. and so many things came up, mm -hmm. including all of these beautiful tributes uh, to her daughter. Mm -hmm. So can you even imagine just like knowing that your daughter was in the spotlight at one point in her life, but not really understanding, especially if you're not on social media, if you don't really right. dive into that world, for her to just to, to really see. like see all of the love and joy and Absolutely. memories of their childhood that Tiffany brought into these people's lives from all over the world. It's amazing when uh, the party started to come back, you mm -hmm. know, when, when the boys had had um invited me to kind of come back from <laughs> by the way it's so funny that you still call them boys oh yeah i do they'll always still be, call them boys they'll always be boys <laughs> the boys i talked to the boys, the boys. yeah the party boys <laughs> my party brothers oh that's so funny i love that uh it's all out of love um, of course but when they when they approached me with the idea of the party getting back together you know, it was kind of bittersweet because it wouldn't be the same, you know, it just yeah. wouldn't be the same. Uh, a lot of people didn't know, but Tiffany, um, she had dealt with, uh, there's really no easy way to talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, thankfully, I've been in touch with her mom, Nancy, over the years. And like I said before, Nancy is a very private person. And, and the reason why uh, I, I believe is because she wanted to protect her daughter as much as possible. Like all parents want to protect their children. Mm -hmm. She wanted to express 
her feelings in a public way. She has been so kind to share these very uh, meaningful, heartfelt words uh, to bring light to um, what Tiffany had been struggling with the past 20 plus years in hopes that it could help others. So um, this is the message from Nancy. She calls it a mother's message. Our dearest Tiffany left this world on Christmas Day 2021. She was a beautiful soul who only had kindness and goodness to give to the world with her sparkling personality and positive energy. She seemed to love everyone and found beauty in all things. She appeared to have everything going for her. Unfortunately, in her early 20s, we saw changes in her behaviors that we could not understand. Shortly thereafter, Tiffany was diagnosed with a severe mental health diagnosis of schizophrenia, something no parent wants to hear, and certainly nothing her father nor I could ever have anticipated. From that point forward, she struggled with disorganized thoughts, delusional thinking, impaired judgment, and irrational fears. Naturally, she could have no understanding of what had happened to her life. Tiffany always remained sweet and loving and lovable. These brain disorders affect people in many different ways and are nothing to be ashamed of, just like any other biological disorder, and is the fault of no one. If any of you reading this or hearing this have a loved one that you recognize having any of these signs, I only hope that you will seek professional guidance and treatment without any fear or shame. NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, has been a tremendous help for so many families, including ours. They provide support and education to families and friends of their loved ones. Her sister, Tanya, and I, as well as our entire family, thank each and every one of you for your outpouring of prayers, love, and support. I only wish that Tiffany could have shared in all of the beautiful words and pictures that you sent. It would fill her heart with happiness and joy. We miss her terribly, but I will be eternally grateful for having those wonderful years with her in my life. It does help my heart to know that she is now resting in peace. And I'm just so grateful that she was, um, that she was able to share that with all of us. And hopefully that this- took courage. That yes. took a lot of courage. Thank Absolutely. you, Nancy. Yes, thank you to, to Nancy. I'm honored that she has trusted and allowed us to be able to share this message on her behalf for Tiffany. It's, it's hard because there's been stigma attached to mental illness for a long time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just don't like talking about it. In fact, before I did um, a show called Next to Normal, where I had to dive into some research about bipolar disorder, I didn't really know anything about mental illness. I was just unaware of how very prevalent it is in real in so many people's lives that mm -hmm. maybe they just weren't sharing with me or maybe I just didn't know how it can affect anybody at any age um, at any time of their lives. Mm -hmm. I know that you, my Lynn, that you had um, a show or a podcast about talking about mental illness and, mm -hmm. and, and mental health. Uh, I didn't know so much about it until, you know, my life was, was touched by it uh, th through friends and family. It is a hard thing to understand because if you don't experience it or if no one around you experiences it, you know, um, you're unaware, you don't know what that is, but but like you said, it is prevalent. There's many people who deal with this, whether it's depression, anxiety, bipolar, you know, schizophrenia, all the, the different labels, you know, that people have to kind of give them to know what it is that we're dealing with. I think in all this, we just want to express that there's nothing to be ashamed of. This is nothing to feel like you're not worthy or you're less than, or, you know, because these are, these are, 
reality. Like our, our, we are bodies, you know, our brains are chemicals. We need help in those ways too. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think you and I both are on the same page that we just want to help people understand that if you struggle with these things, there is help. I went through probably over 20 years with clinical depression and, and, um, until I finally kind of started really doing the work and, and then for me getting on medication, um, I've, I've by God's grace have not dealt with it for nine years now. I've been completely free of depression. Praise God. I know there are different levels of intensity and, um, everybody has a different path, you know, but there's no shame. There's no shame. I do believe that God, uh, that God takes things that that the enemy meant for evil and turns it into mm. good. We want to, you know, shine some light on the importance about talking about mental health mm -hmm. and and how we have to not be ashamed, you know, of talking mm -hmm. about it and being open to finding ways to get the help that 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 we all need to heal. We're just so grateful for Nancy that she's she's willing to allow us to open up about this and, and just share to help people who may need to hear this. I know it's, it's been, it's been a little while since Tiffany's passing. And for so many of us, we wanted to show our love for Tiffany and show our love to, of, of Tiffany to Nancy and to Tiffany's family. That being said, at this very difficult time, mm -hmm in their life to to um to help navigate her untimely passing we're going to be uh, putting together a fundraiser uh, to help her family and also to bring light to an organization the organization is called nami or nami this organization has been helpful to them and also to so many other families dealing with mental health issues. It's going to be a fundraiser with portion of the proceeds going to this organization that is close to Nancy's heart. And then I also have been thinking about uh, a foundation that, um, you know, it's just in the very, very baby stages and to honor Tiffany and to hopefully through her story and the blessing of her mother to help others with similar struggles to find the help that they need to heal. I wanted to call it the Tiffany Hale I Found Love Foundation. Love that. And uh, in my heart, the word love is synonymous with God. Mm. And, uh, you know, God is love. And I thought, who better to heal than God, our creator? Mm -hmm. Um and so uh, that's that's basically what what it is in a nutshell. It's it's again at the very beginning stages. It's all to just bring some some awareness, some light to mental health and how it's so important for us to talk about it. And to, like Mylin said, and and Nancy as well, not to be ashamed of it, not to feel like it's anybody's fault. Hopefully this foundation can help lead people to the places and the people that they need to get help. I love that, Dee Dee. I love that. That's admirable and um, a wonderful way to honor Tiffany. If you are in need of help, we are recommending reaching out to those around you that can possibly help you, whether it's a friend, whether it's a, your spouse, a pastor, um, a counselor, your doctor, your general physician, there are people in your life. You may not believe that, but there are who will be willing to help you take the next step on what you need to do. So don't be afraid to open up to people first about what you're dealing with. You have to be willing to open up about it and let the light in, like literally let the light in on it so that you can be on your journey and your path to healing. Tiffany, will always be remembered as amazing, fun, saucy, kind, loving, talented girl, you know, that she has been. We know this was a, maybe a heavy show for you. Um, you know, if you have heavy any, for all of us, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I don't mean to laugh. I just, uh, it's, it's been a long time 
um, preparing in the sense of us wanting to come together and honor Tiffany and just knowing what, what she has dealt with in her life. If you so desire to come alongside Tiffany's family for the, the, the fundraiser, you will have that all in the information below. Thank you again. And God bless all of you guys. Yes. And thanks God for listening. Okay. Yes. I found love this time. Nobody's gonna steal it away. Gonna tell the whole world. This time, this time love is fine. <laughs> we love you, Tiffany. We love you forever. <laughs>